All right, this is part one of the Lisbon station that I went over in class today. And so the first part, we are going to build this right here. So we are going to build what I was calling the spine in a conceptual mass. So I'll go ahead and do that. We're going to make a line that goes vertically, host some points on that line, host some circles on those points, and put a few parameters in. All right, to do this, I'm going to start from a new conceptual mass. Use my mass RFT, Revit family template, and it's going to open up. First thing I'm going to do is change my background. So graphic display options, background, change it to none, click OK. OK, so you've got two vertical planes and a horizontal plane that's level one, where these two vertical planes intersect is your zero, zero. So that's pretty much where we want to start. So just to ensure that I'm hitting zero, zero, I'm going to place a point there. So I'm going to go to my level one. So now I'm looking straight down on that. And I'm going to place a point right there at that intersection. Go back to my 3D view. Now I want to draw a line straight up that's going to represent that column. Okay, um, and I guess I could show you what we're working on for those of you that don't know. So I'll, all right, so basically we're making this component, okay, or a version, a simplified version of that component. All right, so I'm gonna make a line straight up that's gonna represent the column. And so I'm gonna select the plane that I wanna draw on first. So I'm gonna pick this center plane. So it's gonna draw on that center plane. So. I'm going to go to my reference and line and I want it to draw on plane not on face so I'm going to pick reference plane and I'm going to come and pick that point and I'm just going to draw straight up and left click and it wants to draw more lines so I'm going to hit escape twice to stop that. Now I want to control the height of this line so I'm going to pick it and make this dimension permanent by clicking on the dimension sign and then I'm going to select that dimension and I'm going to put a label on it, add parameter, and we'll name this column height. Okay. Now I'm going to place three points on here. So I'm going to host three points. I hosted the line on this plane and now I'm going to host points on this line. So if I go to point, I want to make sure draw on face is selected and I'm just going to go one, two, three points. Okay, so now I have three points and I want to control where those points are. This point I always want to be at the top of this line. So I'm going to select it and if I come over here to the left you'll see that there's a normalized curve length. So it just assumes the length of this line is one. So I can come in and just type one in here and that line will remain at the end of that line no matter its length. It will always be the full length of that line so it will remain at the top. I'm going to come in and pick this point and I want to understand this one through a distance so instead of the measurement being a normalized curve I'm going to take segment length and it's going to tell me it's 89 feet 1 from the bottom okay and I want to put a parameter on that so I'm going to click on this little gray box and I'm going to add parameter and I'm going to call that point mid, right, because that's the middle point. And I'm going to make it a type parameter. And I'm going to click OK and click OK. Now I'm going to come over here, select that guy, and do the same thing. Change it from normalized to segment length and put a parameter on it. Add parameter, point BOT and click OK. Now if I bring up my family types dialog box, let me pan this over a little bit and make it a little smaller so you can see it. You'll see that all of those parameters are over here and I can now adjust them. So if I wanted the bottom point to be at 40 feet, I could type 40, right? And if I come in and do the midpoint, let's say at 70, then I can apply those. And you see those moving. And if I wanted to change the column height to 100, 
I can apply that and you can see that that point always remains at the top of that line. Alright so the next thing I want to do is I want to host a couple of circles on this point and on that point. So to do that you pick the circle which has a teeny tiny plane on it and I'm going to come over here and go to reference line and circle and I want to make sure that draw on plane on work plane is selected and I'm going to come over here and pick a circle. Okay, So now that circle is hosted on that point which is hosted on that line. Then I want to put a circle on this top point. So I'm going to come over here and go to reference circle and put that in there. The next thing I want to do is I want to put a radius parameter on this guy. So select them, select that, click the dimension to make it permanent, pick that dimension, add parameter, and we'll name this circle top radius. Okay, and then we'll pick this one, we'll name add parameter, and we'll name that circle bottom radius. Okay. Now to make a square that is circumscribed, the way that this column is built, there's a square that's circumscribed within the larger circle um, with the smaller circle. And so we need to add a formula to make that work. Um, I'm not going to go into exactly how we figured that out, but let's go to the edit type dialog box. Or sorry. Yeah, let's go to the family types dialog box. And what I want to do is pull this out a little bit and I want to make the formula bigger because what we want is we want that circle bottom to be controlled uh, by the circle top radius. And so the formula we came up with was circle top radius divided by the square root of 2 which is we did a little Pythagorean math and if we hit apply now that circle is driven by the size of that circle and will always be able to, circum to have a circumscribed square meet with our divisions. I'm going to click OK. Alright so now we've got the the spine basically for what we want to do. So um, I'm going to stop here and I'll make a, a part two.